Brr. <laughs> oh, uh, boozhoo! And welcome back to Boozhoo, not a boozhoo. The podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I am Natasha, out here in the cold. Brr, gissana, it's so cold. Out here in the Zugipun, the snow, Zugipun. Snowing. It is snowing, Zugipun. Brr. I just saw I'd come outside before we started the show, put up my tobacco, and say a little prayer. And then I'll go back inside. Oh, make this short. Get your mother do. Odapadaman niwi asema. Manadu go away day. Or wait a minute. That's <laughs> I just said except my tobacco spirits over there. What I meant to say was Gitchi Manadu Odapanan ni we asema. Great spirit. Except my tobacco. Mikwechka Iji Way back. Thank you for the weather. <laughs> Even though it's freezing, it's uh snowing. It's like two degrees out or whatever, but I'm not going to complain, you know. Um, so I, I say thank you. Please help me uh, to endure the, the brutal, relentless winter. Don't let me become depressed or anxious. Help Nana Buju not to get the winter blues. I don't need, I don't need him getting all, uh, Jack Nicholson on me. I don't want this to turn into The Shining. <laughs> Please help him deal with his starting to get in cabin fever. Mikwech kaiji kakina keku kaiji chike anungum. Thank you for everything that you do today. Mikwech kaiji bamada ziyan. Thank you for my life. <laughs> And uh, miigwech for the communicator and the teleporter that we bought at the secondhand uh, pawn shop. The 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 used Star Trek technology. I'm gonna use it now. Ape inge. Amen. <laughs> it's cold. Boop. Okay, hey, boujou. Hi, sweetie. Are you outside? <laughs> yeah, I came out here to say a little prayer. Would you lock on my coordinates and teleport me in real quick? Yeah, sure. Hang on. All right. One to teleport. Make it so, number one. Uh, sweetie? Uh, yeah. How come it's not working? Remember, you got to jiggle the little wire? Yeah, I jiggle the wire and push in the button. Jiggle the wire first, then push the button and hold it. And... Uh, <laughs> Whoops. Let me try that again. You know, you shouldn't have any problems. <laughs> yeah, this thing's got a terrible short in it. Does it really? Yeah, you just, you almost didn't teleport back. You're kidding! Yeah. Whew. I don't know what's going to kill me, the weather or that old rundown teleporter. <laughs> anyway. How is it outside? It's snowing, and it's cold, and it's miserable, but, I don't know, it feels good to be inside. Yeah, it's nice here. So, how you guys doing? Hey, look, Missy's here. Hey, Cousin Missy, boujou. Missy asks, am I gold? You're golden. Stay golden, pony boy. Nah. <laughs> All that green is gold. Yeah, uh, Missy, you got the gold star for being the first in class. Want to give her a gold star next to Missy's name? Yep. And here's Joseph. He's got the silver star. And there goes the phone. A phone at 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> that just brings the show to a screeching halt. I hate it when people call during the live stream. 
But anyway, Joe is here second. Let's give him a, a silver star. Silver star for Joe. Who's you, Joe? And all his learnings here. Oh, my stars and garters. My stars and garters. <laughs> yeah, my stars and garters. Is that an expression? I'm not sure. I think it might be. It might be an old lady expression. When I'm bringing it back. <laughs> How you doing? Mino Kika Shape. Let's get a bronze star for always learning. And a bronze star for always learning. All right. Tesoros de Tomas. Bujou, Tesoros. Okay, Bujou Niji. Tesoro de Tomas. And Wally Bear is up. Lick your fingers when you jiggle it, not a Bujou. <laughs> yeah, you gotta lick your fingers when you're gonna. If there's a short in that teleporter. I don't want to get myself shocked. Well, that's going to happen. Once in a while. <laughs> no. Anyway, um, what else was I going to say? You're going to say good morning to Jim Dunn. Oh, Jim Dunn. Boo-shoo, Jim. How nice to see you. And Neil Guffey, a B-29 skyscraper. <laughs> Boo-shoo, Neil. Mino Giga Jeb, good morning. So today, our Ojibwe, what is it today, sweetie? It's um Tuesday. Nijo Gishika, it's the second day. It's the second day of the work week. Nijo Gishika, the second day. And on this second day, I thought maybe we could have a little moment. Of Nabwakawin, a little moment of wisdom. And talk about humility. Now, I always want to say this. I know you say this all the time. But in the Anishinaabe way, <laughs> you know, generally young women don't talk, don't give advice to their elders. You don't talk down to your elders. And you don't talk down to men and whatever. Um, when I talk about these things, if you're my elder, I'm not. This is for the kids. This is for the people who are younger than me. I want to talk today as your, as your old auntie Natasha. Dubadain dizzy wind, dash nebwakuin. Humility and wisdom. Words of wisdom, Lloyd. Words of wisdom. Hey, that's from The Shining, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I got this shining on my mind because we're going, we're getting cabin fever just like Jack Nicholson. <laughs> but dang, does he win? What is humility? Well, like I just said, um, in the Anishinaabe way, it's good to be humble. You shouldn't be all prideful. You shouldn't act like, like you think you're better than everybody, like you think you're smarter. In our way, especially when it comes to our elders, we have humility. We don't. You wouldn't assume that you know something an elder doesn't know. Even if it comes to talking about humility or wisdom. But uh, as I get older, I keep learning new little things about humility. Dabadain does he win. In the Anishinaabe seven grandfather teachings, the, uh, what is it, the Mahingan? Yeah, the wolf. The wolf represents humility. And I think it has something to do with being... Um, it's not being... Having low self-esteem. It's not like they're telling us, you should think you're not very cool. <laughs> they're not, that's not humility. A dog... Um, <laughs> is different than a wolf. A wolf is untamed and wild, but noble and scary. And it doesn't apologize for what it is, but he's not trying to win anybody's favor. He is what he is. He's not a show off. He accepts what he is. Humility. And then I was thinking the other day about getting humbled. You know, everybody says, oh, you should be humble. 
But nobody wants to get humbled. Nobody wants to be humiliated. And it's a great teacher to be humiliated. When you're trying for something and you fail, you fall on your face. When your dumb ideas finally catch up with you and you do something stupid and you embarrass yourself. Or you, you know, sometimes you're the toughest lessons you learn. You learn because you've been humiliated. Um, it's, it's a gift <laughs> to be humiliated. That's what I learned. Because the sting of learning your lesson the hard way is short-lived. You go, you know, like when, when, I can't think of an example. When have we been humiliated? I think every video we did up until about a year ago was pretty humiliating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, no, not like that. But like when you think you're, you got it all figured out and you think you know, you know, woo. And then something will happen. Life will happen. And it'll bring, it'll bring it to your knees and keep you there if you let it. <laughs> like Sylvester Stallone says. It ain't about how hard you can hit. It's about can you take the hits and keep moving forward. Because I don't care how tough you are. Me, you, nobody's going to hit harder than life. <laughs> and it'll knock you down to your knees and keep you there if you let it. <laughs> I miss Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, I hope he calls in again sometime. Yeah, me too. Um, okay. But to be humiliated. It's humiliating to um, get put in your place. You know? Sometimes... I don't know. Maybe I don't have any Nebuakawin wisdom when it comes to this. Which animal represents Nebuakawin? The uh, beaver, a mick. A mick. Nebuak wisdom. I think wisdom comes after you've been knocked down a peg. <laughs> you know, when you get get humble. Sometimes deep. Uh, disappointment, grief, getting fired, getting dumped, getting divorced, having a few too many plans that have gone wrong. <laughs> you try to remember how fine your life used to be. Those times after everything kind of, when a you know what hits the fan. And you can't deny it anymore. There's nowhere to hide. They say when when you uh, when you're going down, <laughs> when bad stuff starts happening, you know. And they say you know death happens in threes. Well, sometimes like bad stuff happens. You'll you know your your wife will cheat on you. You'll lose your job and you'll uh, crash your car. All in the same weekend sometimes. You'll get humbled, humiliated. One day you're riding high, the next day, you know, you're facing an investigation for inappropriate whatever. Um, but they say when you're underwater and you're going down, get to the bottom as quickly as possible. Because once you hit rock bottom, that's when you have a solid place where you can, you can kind of push off. You push off and you, and you can get momentum, get back to the surface, get up to the air again. That's what it is, wisdom. You, you could probably talk more on this than I can. You really think so? Yeah. The bidet dizzy win, humility. Nabucco in wisdom. And this has been your moment of wisdom from Auntie Natasha. No. All right. Um, sweetie, did you want to get up here and uh, kind of talk on your own show?
Yeah, you can do it if you want. <laughs> no, I'm going to go. I'm going to let you get up here. All right. But first, here's a song. Okay, talking about wisdom and humility. Here's a song by, um. I guess, who wrote this? Was it, uh, <laughs> no, I can't remember his name. You mean Jimi Hendrix? Well, yeah, Jimi Hendrix, but what's his uh, name these days? Oh, yeah, he looks just like, uh, doggone it, I forget who he looks like. That actor? This is Red House. <laughs> I'm going to let Nana Bougie get up here and talk about it. Yeah, but, um, and Michael sings this song. Jimi Hendrix, Red House. Miigwech, biz, and dowie egg. Thank you for listening. Red house over yonder Where my baby stayed There's a red house over yonder Where my baby stayed I've been home to see my baby In 99 and one half days Wait a minute, something's wrong My key won't unlock this door Oh no, I think there's something wrong My key won't unlock this door No more I got a bad, bad feeling My baby don't live here no more oh, It's alright, I still got my guitar to play Show us how it's done! <laughs> Michael Lyons on the guitar! There's a red house over yonder Where my baby stays There's a red house over yonder Where my baby stays <laughs> But if my baby don't love me still Well I know her sister If my baby don't love me still well, I know her sister, and my baby don't love me still. I know her sister. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if my baby don't love me still, I know her sister will. That is some resi logic there. <laughs> what? If my girlfriend doesn't love me still, I'll just go out with her sister. Dude, ish. <laughs> What's wrong with that? You know, just date the sister if you're, the one girl dumps you. But that was a different time. But yeah, you were talking about Jimi Hendrix. Uh, let's find that picture. Oh, you got to look for the picture of Jimi Hendrix? Yeah. And... Um, Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Um, so, a red house over yonder, and Jimi Hendrix never died. He just became Morgan Freeman. That's insane. I know. Doesn't it look like, like that? Hello there, I'm Morgan Freeman. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's kind of like Fauci and the guitarist from Poison. <laughs> oh, C.C. DeVille? Yeah, C.C. DeVille. Once you see it, you kind of go, uh, is that the same guy? 
What what happened there? Just once, I'd like to sneak over to Morgan Freeman's house at night and see if he's like playing the guitar secretly and just wailing. It's like, aha, I knew it. <laughs> but because that brings up an issue, you know, today is Tuesday. Oh, pff, but of course, I, we don't have the Prince thing anymore. Tuesday is, used to be, dig if you will, a picture day. And I was hoping we'd have a picture of uh, Prince, the artist formerly known as being alive. Hey! <laughs> yeah. Dig, if you will, a picture. It's our next Ojibwe words. Mizuna Kazon is a picture. Mizuna Kazon. Like a photograph, a picture of a painting, any just a picture. Mizuna B, a gun, is a drawing. And then a Mizuna B, a gay, win an E, is a drawing man or an artist. Mizuna B, oh, I didn't even finish the... Ojibwe. Yeah. Mizunibi Ige Winini. That's a, a, an artist. The artist formerly known as Prince. Um, but if you dig of this picture, you have to ask yourself if uh, Jimi Hendrix isn't really dead. If they faked his death and then, like, well, you know, here's my theory, sweetie. What is it? Uh, Jimi Hendrix was wanted by the mob or something. Yeah. And so he went into the witness protection program. And they gave him a new identity to, to keep him from getting, you know. He, had, he turned state witness or whatever. So they, they faked his death. The same thing happened to Elvis. He turned in some bad guys. So the government gave him a new identity. And they said, hey, Jimmy, uh, I'm really sorry. You're not going to be able to play your guitar to the people anymore, you know, because the bad guys will get you. So we're going to give you a new identity. And uh, from now on, your name is no longer Jimi Hendrix. Your name is, will be Morgan Freeman. And we're going to get you a new home in Hollywood and uh, try, to, uh, try to get a job, I don't know, acting or something. Become an actor. You have to stay in hiding. You can't be a musician anymore. They'll know for sure. And he goes, well, what if somebody sees me? And he goes, no, it's okay. Put on some fake, uh, you know, freckles. You'll be the one black guy with freckles anybody knows. What is he, half ginger? <laughs> yeah, he's a black ginger. He's a black ginger. Um, he's a chocolate chip ginger cookie. Actually, he's just a chocolate chip, chip cookie. Got black uh, freckles, um, and grow, grow, you know, grow a goatee instead of the mustache and the little soul patch. Nobody will be able to tell. And sure enough, it worked. For many years, Jimi Hendrix hid in plain sight, doing movies like Shawshank or Redemption, and um, I don't know, Driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> and narrating everything. He just narrates commercials and stuff. But nobody knows. He's actually Jimi Hendrix. The most overrated guitarist ever. That's right, I said it. Come and get me, old. Come and get me, baby boomers. <laughs> Do you think Jimi Hendrix is an overrated guitarist? For sure. Red House is like the song everybody learns... When, they, when they're learning the guitar because it's just a 12-bar blues. Jimi Hendrix, you know, remember that one song? I was like, move over, Rover, and let Jimmy take over. And he's like, then he's going to do like some crazy guitar solo. And it's like one note. Hey, look at me, I'm Jimi Hendrix. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. Bonk. <laughs> I don't know. Jimi Hendrix is a mystery. 
It's also a mystery because he played his guitar, you know, right-handed. Yeah. And I think his, he play, also played it upside down. It wasn't strung, you know, right-handed. He, uh, he taught himself how to play guitar on an upside down guitar. It was like he what did, did he didn't he know any guitar players when he was learning the guitar? You know, he just grabbed it and was holding it wrong and then just learned how to play the guitar wrong. And then became the most famous guitarist to ever to live. You know, I mean the guy only had like 3 years of a career before he died and he still remains just as popular as Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen had a 40-year career, multiple albums, and people mention Jimi Hendrix and Eddie Van Halen in the same sentence. So Jimi Hendrix, you, you, you can't even compare yourself to Eddie Van Halen. You know. But nobody cares about guitar players anymore. I'm a, I'm, an, I'm a relic from a past time, huh, sweetie? Yeah, you are. Back in my days, in the 1980s, uh, you know, you paid attention to like, oh, who's a great guitarist? Who's your favorite guitarist? I'm gonna buy all his albums. You, know, you could tell different guitar players. Oh, I heard. Yeah, you could. You could tell that was uh, Eddie Van Halen on the Michael Jackson song, "Beat It." You could, you know, you could tell the difference between Slash and Michael Jackson, or Slash and uh, Eddie Van Halen, and Randy Rhodes and Ace Frehley, and whoever, you know. People followed guitar players like sports teams, you know. We all had our favorites, you know. Who's the fastest? Who's the most, you know, beautiful guitar player? Who's the best acoustic player? But now it's all made on computers. Nobody cares. Wally Bear says, nobody compares to Eddie Van Halen. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Wally gets it. <laughs> was, I, I suspect Wally grew up in the 80s too. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Where has my childhood gone? Where, where, where have the good old days? Won't you tell me, sweetie? Won't you tell me, where have all the good times gone? There's a Van Halen song right there. Where have all the good times gone? I don't know. I feel like it'll never be spring again. I don't remember a time when it wasn't winter. Ugh. You know, I thought when I turned 55... That uh, I, I'd be one of those guys like, oh, time speeds up. It, it flies by when you get old. Nope. This winter has made, has changed all that. I feel like it was, like like we did the, the live show on Michael's birthday in January 28th. That was only two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it feels like two months ago. Right. Because when it's this cold and everything is such a pain in the neck and when you finally succumb to cabin fever and the winter blues, time just stands still. It's like, ugh. You can't believe it's 2022. And yet, you wonder, how in the world did 35 years just go by? There's stuff I'm still I've still been meaning to do that uh, I decided to do in like 1992. I went, oh, you know what I'm gonna do sometime? And here we are. It's 24 years later, 34 years, whatever it is. Can't do math. That's because the uh, the winter has given me the the winter blues, the winter anxieties, and the winter depression, sweetie. Are you still feeling? Feeling bad? Yeah. We'll talk about it with the medicine wheel. The, the mushkiki de tibisade? 
Last night, if you didn't see our show, Natasha was trying to coach me out of my winter blues using the, um, nope, using the uh, medicine wheel. The Mushkiki de Tibisade. It's the, the circle that uh, is divided in fours to represent a lot of things. The four races. <laughs> that was my favorite part. The whiteies, the Chinese, the redskins, and the blackies. These are the four races of uh, the medicine wheel. It also represents the four stages of life. The four states of being. The four directions. The four beats and a measure of music. A one, a two. One, two, three, four. Um, I don't know. But actually, I am feeling a little bit better. But depression will humble you. You know. When you were talking about uh, Dubadane, Dizzy Wynn, and uh, what was the other one? Nabwaka Wynn, Humility and Wisdom. The only wisdom I've ever learned was after being knocked down. After a uh, surrealist ask, is there a Mizuna B. Ikwe? Or Ige Ikwe? Yes, exactly. A female artist is a uh, Mizuna B. Ige Ikwe. Ikwe means woman. You know, a lot of stuff in the Ojibwe language, they just say man, like medicine man. Um... But there are women who know all about medicines, as they call them, like a mushkikikwe. Mushkikikwe. <laughs> but, um, uh, humility, when, okay, if you, uh, if you find yourself in some point in life where you have to admit, finally, you know, no one's around, you're all by yourself. You can take off that brave face. You can, uh, <laughs> what is it? She realized she didn't. Yep. Me, I don't know what to say. I don't either. Me quite she realist. hundred bucks. hundred bucks, that's insane. Thank you very much, me quetch. See that you're the rest of you guys? That's called a super chat. <laughs> I feel kind of guilty, but, you know, thank you so very much. I'm, I'm humbled by your very, your generosity. But uh, I, I usually get humbled by when you finally, like, if you, if you find yourself depressed or worrying all the time, just kind of miserable, having the winter blues, when you, when you take off that brave face and maybe just cry by yourself for a minute, you just give it up. That's when you can find, everybody's got like this inner wisdom, inner strength. Michael did a comic book once called, um, was that in Grief Relief or Gray Alien Meditation? I think it was in Grey Alien Meditation, which is part of the Rockstar Cartoonist comic book. Rockstar Cartoonist is a comic book Michael wrote, but in one of the chapters he talks about depression. And there's a drawing there where you're in the abyss and then a big version of yourself grabs you by the arms and says, come on, let's go. You've been here before. We've gotten ourselves out of this before. We'll do it again. You can do it. There's an inner voice, which who knows what that is. It might be the spirit of your ancestors. It might be your guardian angel. It might be your grandma whispering in your ear. But when you humble yourself and just admit defeat, then that is when something amazing can happen. Something will wake up. I know for me, I you know when I was... Before, before we started the show, I was sort of lost, you know, kind of given up. Just, you know, 
I didn't have any plans of trying really hard to do a show on YouTube before we did it. But I was depressed and uh, bored, scared, and afraid. <laughs> you know, like like every scoundrel. You know, went all miserable, saying, "You know, here I am once again. I'm all depressed. Get you, Monado. Can you please help me not to be so depressed? Just change me. You know, I don't know what the answer is." Um, and I have no right to be uh, miserable. And then, in my misery, just started goofing around with that old cell phone camera. <laughs> you know, just heard a little voice said, "You know what? You should uh, you should try and pronounce some of those words, Ojibwe words that Michael's you know, drawing the cartoons for." Just get on YouTube and go, just do it once. And I started singing songs about coffee or whatever. And hikes, it, you know. I mean, who am I to be teaching a Ojibwe or singing songs or anything? Talking like this? Well, oh, I'm some big mushkiki winanee. I'm some big medicine man giving a wisdom. <laughs> just the opposite. I'm the last guy who should. And that's not true. That, that was a lie there. When, you, when I have humility, I realize, oh, you know what? Of all the things, and maybe you guys are like this too. If you're, you know, if you haven't succeeded in life, maybe you're not good at anything. Maybe you're not that bright. You can't work on your own car. The pipes freeze. You don't know what to do. You stand by the plumber and feel like an idiot. Your relationships, you get dumped, you get fired, you're broke. Out of shape, <laughs> you know. If you're at all like me, uh, after you get humbled enough, then you realize, you know what? I'm actually an expert on being a loser. I have experienced being a loser, being humiliated. It's humiliating to get fired, to do something every day, to tell your grandma, "Hey, I got a job." I'm teaching a Jibway language in a college, in a high school. Oh, I'm trying really hard. Three years go by. I dedicate all this energy, and then one day you get fired. Well, that's pretty embarrassing. But then the wisdom you gain is okay. Now what? Now what do I do? Well, maybe I should lean in a little bit to listening to the wind. Listening to a voice from the great spirit, from the creator. Give up a little of my control. Have a little humility. Let, let the great spirit guide your life. You know, they, they sometimes call it letting go. Letting go? Yeah. Like if you're swimming against the current or you're trying to walk against a river or something, it's all you struggle and you're, oh, you're trying not to fall. But when you let go and go with the... Uh, with the current, sometimes that's where you're supposed to go anyway. Um, Alcoholics Anonymous, they'll say stuff like, let go and let God. <laughs> you know, I tried really hard to like you know, become a rock star or something. Oh, I'm going to be an artist someday. Oh, I'm going to, you know. A big, big loser, big failure. Constantly not becoming the thing I was pretending to be. And until I really, really got depressed and really gave up, then I got the wisdom to go, you know what? Just start sharing what you do know, like I'm doing right now. Get honest. Give your best wisdom on a subject that you know something about. Being humiliated. <laughs> The beautiful thing about being humiliated, about accepting, you know, giving up, going with the flow, letting go, is that you can have a sense of humor about yourself. You know, now when I look back on my, my hardest times, it's like telling war stories. You know how like our, our grandparents 
they would tell stories about oh World War Two, you know. Well, for, for my generation, it was just like telling, sharing stories of being humiliated. I remember one time, you know, I had been working at this job and blah blah blah. That was, you know, boss had to set me down. And, you know. Um, getting dumped. <laughs> Screwing up your life, making decisions where you just screw up everything. And it was like when, when when I moved to Boulder. I was there for like a year and a half. I had to come home with my tail between my legs. Hey, how was life in the big city, Mr. Big Shot? Welcome back to the res. <laughs> you know. Oh, what what what's this? Didn't uh, didn't quite pan out for you, did it? But in the humility, you know, uh, when I finally admitted defeat, I ended up moving back in with my grandma. You know, she only had eight years left. If I had been a success in life, I wouldn't have ended up being able to spend so much time with my grandma near the end. So, you know, whatever. You got to give up, <laughs> be a loser, let go. And then there is the wisdom of your life path. You know, people think they're in control of their lives. They don't control anything. Get your manado. It controls your life. See, this is the other thing about having anxious feelings about the house, sweetie. Yeah. So you constantly think you're hearing something. The fan just went off. That's fine. But for a second there, it sounded exactly like running water to me. <laughs> I know. I'm always afraid the pipes are going to blow. Yeah, what is? I got post-traumatic stress. I'm like, what was that? Did the pipes just blow and a bunch of water go shooting out from underneath the sink? Even though the they're brand new pipes and the water, I just ran the water. What? How, many, how long have you been on here? 42 minutes? Just 42 minutes ago, it's fine. But now I'm all like, what next? What's going to happen? Anyway. Double Dan Dizzy win. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a, got a bit of the corona. You got the coronavirus? Yeah. My, 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 my corona. Oh, I'm on a pretty one. A pretty one. Come and take a look at my, my corona. Never going to stop being a duck. Whatever happened to The Knack? I know, they were a great band. You guys remember The Knack? My Sharona. Sharona. I, I halfway suspect his girlfriend's name was actually Sharon, but he was just trying to be cool in that song. Sharona. My Sharona. Do, 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 do. So anyway, do we have another song, sweetie? I thought we did. Weren't you going to play the, um, that cool, the gibberish ad? Oh, yeah. Uh, speaking of cartoons, <laughs> and uh, the rock star cartoonist, here's a commercial for Michael's book, Oh, Gibberish, on sale now at Amazon.com.
But it's got nothing to do with you I've got no one still you won't do And after today I'd say we are hard quite through But I know you won't break down, you won't miss a step, you won't be around And you'll never forget it one day When I'm old and gray I might look back and say That these were the golden days And one day when I'm old and I'm gray I might look back and say This was the price I paid So it goes, or so they say Time's like a mountain scape Well, I don't know, but I can't complain God knows I've got my own escape And sometimes I just might Even in the middle of the night Well, sometimes and someday Sometimes will I wake and bake But it's got nothing to do with you I've got no one still you won't do And after today I'd say we are hard quite through, but I know you won't break down, you won't miss a step, you won't be around, and you'll never regret it one day, when I'm old and gray, I might look back and say, that these were the golden days, and one day, when I'm old and I'm gray, I might look back and say, this was the price I Even in the middle of the day Stephen grins a little, so they say Sometimes, sometimes will I wake and Sometimes, well, I, you know what? <laughs> That's a cool song, Michael. Hey, thanks, dude. And there you have it. The rock star cartoonist, Michael Lyons. If you'd like to order, order books by Michael Lyons, he's got some children's books, comic books, uh, picture books. For sale at Amazon.com. And uh, Tesseros de Tomas says, um, Oh, I gotta go back up. You were with GMA at the end. That is a win. Oh, Grandma. Yeah, exactly. I know. That's where I sometimes think, you know, your failures are just does great spirit going, No, 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 not that door. I'm closing this door in your face. I don't want you going in here. This is your path I'm going on this hallway. I want you to spend some time with your grandma. I got some stories you need to learn. <laughs> you know, before it's too late here. You know. Uh if I'd been successful in my career or whatever, or in relationships or anything, I would have been unsuccessful at getting to know my grandma. I would have I wouldn't have learned about like boarding schools and all that stuff. Um you know, a lot of the stuff, you know, I did was because I, you know, was with my grandma. But anyway, uh, 
Universe has its own plan. Exactly. Says Tassetos. Papa Wagosh. Hey, Buju, Niji. Papa Wagosh is here, sweetie. Buju, Papa Wagosh. <laughs> Papa Wagosh says, what? Watch out with all that junior rolling in. The IRS is going to beg you. And the, and the new $600 law. There's a new $600 law? I don't know. I uh, I got a thing and uh, there's a way you can look. They, they give you like a W-9 or something on for all the super chats. You have to claim that when you go into the... I have an accountant. I have an accountant. Listen to me. I, I pay the three hundred dollars to have somebody else file my taxes because I can't. I I'm too dumb to even remember stuff like, you know. Oh, does my, is my rent count? Can I write that off? Yeah, exactly. That's like an office expense. Oh. Do you promise you only use that space for your work? It's like the world is my office. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. And Daniel Black is back. Oh, uh, bonjour, Daniel. Bonjour, Daniel. He's back in black. Missy just got home from work. Coffee and cigarette time. You've earned it, my friend. That's the best sit coffee and cigarette of the day. The one right after you get home from work. Must have been working the night shift. Working on the night moves. Trying to get some awkward driving news. I can play um, that song on the guitar. I know you can. And it sounds great, but you, you realize that it's just the intro riff that makes that song great. Jum, 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 jum. A little too tall, could have used a few pounds. I was a little too tall, I could have used a few pounds. That was me in high school. I don't know, is it possible to be too tall and too thin? You're never too tall, you're never too thin. You never have too much money. Yeah. But I was a lanky kid. Um, didn't have a whole lot of muscle mass. I used to do, we used to do, <laughs> I had a running gag when I was in high school. When I was in uh, junior high, the big movie that year was Gandhi. They made a movie out of uh, Gandhi, the the great leader. I, I'm not sure who Gandhi is. I guess he freed India from England or something. But he was a grown man in glasses who wore a cloth diaper. <laughs> that's who Gandhi was to you? That's, that's as far as I know. So there's a movie they made about a man who wore just a cloth diaper. And so sometimes as a joke, for my friends, we'd be out, you know, swimming or something. And I'd go, hey guys, look at me, I'm Gandhi. And I'd, I'd bunch up my shorts, or maybe like my sweatpants, to making it look like I was wearing Gandhi diaper. And I would just suck in my gut so much and let my ribs show. Because I had the same body as Gandhi. <laughs> that is skinny. Yeah. I pretty much had the uh, physique of a guy on a hunger strike. But, yeah, so every once in a while, you know, we'd get drunk and then my buddies be like, hey, man, do Gandhi. <laughs> Just trying to make people laugh. Because that's what we thought was funny. You know, Gandhi. <laughs> it was the 80s. We didn't take anything seriously. I know. I wasn't concerned about anything in the 80s except my hair. I wanted my hair to be spiky on top, long in the back. I don't want my eyeliner to run, you know. I wanted my bandana, you know. We were ready for the COVID in the 80s. Everybody had a bandana just around their neck that we never put up over our noses for some reason. Just wear that bandana around your neck or your bracelets or around your ankles. And if you're really crazy, you could fashion a bandana into like a garter belt Wear that over your, your ripped up skin tight jeans. Bandana. <laughs> I don't know. I think I just officially ran out of anything relevant to say. <laughs> Should we call it a show? We might have to. 
Missy says, I thought that was about right with the time difference. Or as Missy calls it, a Tim difference. <laughs> time, yeah, okay. Wally Bear. Message redacted. Wally Bear likes to talk crap and then redact it. Listen, man, why don't you stand by your writing? You can't just say something and then redact it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 1976, good year for rock. The greatest year for rock. 76, I mean, that was like the year, what, Destroyer came out? Kiss Dest was that 76, um, Paul? I think it was 76 when Kiss Destroyer came out. Yeah. And I think that's like when Boston came out and Foreigner, all that, just the lasting classic rock stuff. Led Zeppelin. The Who. Yeah, music sucks now. Some people refer to this as the stalled century. That uh, as a species, you know, like there was all these great changes and innovations and creativity up until the 1970s. And then nothing new is being made. You know, there isn't the new... I mean, people go, oh, well, really? What about the computer? Yeah, big deal. You know, we haven't advanced like they did from 1800 to 1900. You know, when they went from grass huts to, you know, skyscrapers or whatever. The plane, automobile, and then music, you know, electric music, recording music. You know, the newspaper, all that stuff. You know, the 20th, 21st century is a whole lot of, you know, redoing stories that they, you know, movies are terrible. They can't even come up with a new movie idea. It's just, okay, let's make a movie about a comic book story again. Oh, let's remake the Ghostbusters. Let's remake the dinosaur movies. Let's remake King Kong. They can't come up with anything new. Tercero de Tomas says, it's a shift, not a stall, a shift. There's been some sort of shift in the time-space continuum. There's something messed up about this. I think we're living in a matrix, sweetie. You think we're in the matrix? Yep. I think I sense a, a disturbance in the force. Something's not right. Have you guys noticed this? Does it ever seem like... Like, you ever have one of those, uh, what do they call it, when you wake up in a dream? A lucid dream? Yeah, a lucid dream. I've had a lucid dream before where I'm just sort of aware that it's I'm dreaming. Not enough to, like, do anything fun with it. I didn't, you know, the whole thing with The Matrix is that uh, Keanu Reeves can do stuff in The Matrix. It's like waking up to the dream and then oh now I can fly because it's just an illusion but uh, when you wake up in your dream this happened to me once I I looked at everybody and went hey you guys we're in a dream aren't we and the dream characters everybody who wasn't me they looked at me was just expressionless just like kind of like they already knew like I wasn't, none of them were like surprised to hear this. Nobody t tried to tell me I was crazy. But it was almost like they awkwardly didn't know what to say. Like, um, okay. Then what? I didn't know what it just felt. And so they say like if you're trying to wake yourself up in a dream, light switches don't work. You can't ever, you'll never have a dream where you go to a light switch and Turn on from dark to light. For some reason, that's hard to do in dreams. So, um, one of the practices I do, or I did for a while, was every time I would uh, t turn on a switch, I'd say to myself when I'm awake, uh, this is a dream, this is a dream, this is a dream. 
so that someday when I'm dreaming about turning on the light, I'll say, this is a dream, this is a dream, this is a dream. And in the dream, I'll go, this is a dream. And then, you know, have a lucid dream. And this has been <laughs> your Ojibwe live stream ramble on of the morning. On this Tuesday morning, sweetie. On this Neo Nijo Gijaga. Nijo Gijaga, the second day. And now I think that's enough. You think that's enough? Yep, that's an hour. Okay. Unless you want to say something, Michael. Michael? Michael! Oh, sorry. Uh, what did I miss? You were sleeping through this whole thing? I was, you know, resting my eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, the sleepy uh, creator of the show, Michael Lyons. Anyway, do you want to add anything, sweetie? No, let's just tell him I said thank you. And Tasha says thank you. And I would like to say, Miigwech Ganawabieg. Thank you for watching. Buju, not a buju. A podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I am not a buju. It's over here. It's over here. It's the lovely and talented Natasha. Hola. Hola. Miigwech Ganawabieg. Thank you for watching, everyone. And over here. Dude, wake up. Oh, I'm sorry. Michael Lyons, Ikadon Buju, Ikadon Gigawaba Min, Minawa Niji. Say, I'll see you again. I will see you again, everyone. <laughs> and I will see you again. Gigawaba Min, Minawa. Sweetie, when to teleport? Make it so, Weenie Mushin. Nah.